welcome in the Coach Mastermind community and thank you for being patient and waiting for us. Um, today we will have Hamid on our uh, call and we'll be talking about self-sabotaging mainly, so which is, re which is related to some sort of dark side and there, is, there are some questions to be answered, so let's just get right into it. Hamid, tell us a little bit about yourself. Uh, well, I've been on the path of self-discovery and understanding myself for the last, basically since I was born, but especially since I did my inner child therapy work uh, about 20 years ago in 2001. 2001. And since, yeah, and since then, since kind of figuring out that the most important thing in the universe for me is to understand myself and different parts of myself and different agendas within myself and different goals within myself then um yeah and then i got into you know life coaching and helping people but yeah that's uh, you know i i could ex explain and describe myself in a lot of ways but connection to myself is what I'm all about. So, uh, about two, 20 years of experience, correct? In more than more than that, like really from the inner child and before I... Yeah, I, I mean, I, you know, I started on a spiritual path when I was 13 by reading Carlos Castaneda and, uh, you know, things about assemblage point and mm -hmm. the nature of life and you know I, I've never really sort of accepted the fact that oh we are here on this planet to just you know being born and getting married and die and make money or something I've never that kind of never really worked for me and I've always been looking to like what is the purpose of this whole thing and so mm -hmm. uh, and I really didn't really get far not until I kind of started having a way of understanding myself and seeing what is that, uh, what is that actually motivates me. So it sounds like there was, since your early years that you were having on back of your mind that some sort of uh, questioning that, oh, it's something more than society kept telling me. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. It never, I was never really, satisfied nor was I um, interested so much in the answers that society gave me but I also at the same time I did not have <clears throat> a better way and I also felt extremely you know the idea of self-sabotage is not even close to what I had what I had was I was of the mind that I walk in the street and if there is rain and there is one brick, like everywhere, everybody is having rain on their head. But if there is one brick coming up the sky, that one brick is gonna hit me. That was my experience of the world. That I am always the unlucky one. That everything, the worst things are gonna always happen to me and people are gonna always treat me horrible. And I lived that, I lived that for 30 years until I started. Well, that, that's interesting concept. But, um, I learned uh, quite like a few years ago that um, word will not bother to people who aren't really um, kind of a worthy to be challenged to. So there is some, re I learned that there is some reason that you've been challenged so much to learn, to teach others as well, to show that message through your mess, what's happened in your life. Because yeah. otherwise you, you can see those people who are just living the life like a cog in the system without realizing what the heck going on. And there are, there are people who have constant challenges in their life. And how, how would you see that? Topic. Well, you are absolutely right, Pavel. I mean, the, the, the thing is that there are so many different soul 
ages on this planet right now. You know, there are soul babies and there's young souls and there are old souls and there are mature souls. Mm -hmm. And each one of us plays a different role for this divine master plan, if you will. And if somebody is here to just have a, you know, drink vodka and party and have a, an easy life, they have that. And it's like they're, you know, they're born to a rich family maybe, and they, they never get challenged. They, they never have to really examine anything because life is basically this, this life for them is maybe just a vacation life. You know, it's just like a vacay. They came here, it's vacationing. And unfortunately, like probably 80% of people are like that because they're not at that soul level. But then there are people like me, people like you, people who end up wanting to change the world. Then we can. It's like, like it's impossible for us. If we, if we just like, you know, like Morpheus told Neil, that is like the splinter in your mind. No matter what is happening, you always feel something is extremely, extremely off. Now, when you don't have the tools, that offness and the fact that you're not being shielded and you don't have a vacation life, that's what I had. That I wasn't being shielded and I didn't have a vacation life and I didn't know how to make the best out of my but, you know, but the rest of the people are being shielded by their ignorance, by their whatever they, they have. And finally, uh, the, you know, and then, then you get to a point that, oh, you're not being shielded, but you're okay. You're getting to the point to realize, the, the, like, like you did, and... You started to accepting that? Is that correct word? Accepting, discover, more discovering uh, that what's, what's I, happening. I, I, I now see that it's like this Pavel, it's this, this thing that, you know, this reality matrix is like a prison. Um, mm -hmm. But the thing is that the prison, it's just a bunch of bars in front of you and the rest, the, there is no walls. So you can't just move out. There is no reason for you to be stuck in this room. But our reality is designed and we are programmed and traumas and everything else that is created in this situation is the way that your head is fixed, that you cannot move your head to say, oh, there is freedom right there, freedom right there, freedom right there. You are stuck only seeing these bars. So you see, like um, very short, uh, very sh a very narrow, short. A, a very narrow, a very narrow. narrow view of reality, and everything else is freedom and miracles and magic. But you don't see that because you're being programmed. Your thoughts and emotions are being programmed to only experience the worst. Well, very narrow that phone thing, <laughs> the phone, for example. Yeah. We are yes. constantly programmed throughout that. To, to yes. see the world only, like uh, to see that window only through those bars. So you got those bars on the on the phone, and you kept being jealous, kept being um, sp spreading negative energy, and just following uh, as other people do because you see the freaking screen on your phone first thing in the morning, first thing before going to sleep, and that's programming you. But yeah. And it, everything else around you is programming. Everything else, you know, you get up in the morning and the TV tells you, you know, the CEO of some company fired 40,000 people to increase shareholder profit. And then they tell you, and that's a good thing because greed is good. And they, they, they create this sort of a reality. And then like, you know, and then they say, if you're duplicitous, if you're dishonest, if you're a lawyer, you know, all these things, it's good. And so it's like the, the world is upside down and it creates all this sort of negativity inside you and then creates all these people who are at each other's throat for one dollar. And then they not only do that, they also make you believe that this is your human nature, that human nature is cruelty, human nature is unkindness, human nature is stupidity, 
and that is the farthest from the truth. That is just a hundred million miles from the truth. But you need to be programmed. We need to be programmed as such to stay nicely in ourselves. There are some social rules which are kind of re required to live the life and live around other people, but there is way. But the programming make its own sense. Companies need to hire people who are going to be doing the job. But then I re then I'm realizing, okay, companies can hire people not because um, they make them afraid and make them need things and buy things but for the higher purpose so people some people are here to lead and create companies and do coaching and and support others and some people are are fine with following up other people and, and the point i'm trying to bring across is that it's nothing wrong with actually being a follower as long as it's as you as being you who is truly believing in some other's vision instead of seeing the world through somebody else through that bars with limitations yeah i, I mean the, the thing is that there is nothing wrong with, with anything there's nothing wrong to be a leader there's nothing wrong to be a follower there's nothing wrong to be a partner it's just that you need to choose to do it choose to do it and do it consciously the problem is that most stuff that people do on this planet is done unconsciously. You're not choosing to be somebody's follower. And look, you and I are having a conversation and maybe you and I decide to help each other. And when we are helping each other, there are points that you are the leader and you are the coach and I enjoy following you. And there are points that I lead and you follow me. It's like a dance, right? And when you dance, a dance is not, it's not just one person lead, lead, follow, lead, follow, lead, follow. But then it's interesting because even with the dance, when you really get into the spirit of the dance, then there's a point that nobody's leading. Everybody's following because we are just moving with this energy and it's not a sense of, oh, I am the one who's leading. No, we are just both following this energy. And so following is actually the most beautiful thing, but if you actually follow and surrender for the right reasons, for the right energy, the thing is that unfortunately that is not the case. It's interesting to see that it's not a black and white. You can't really take, you can't really choose. No, it's not a proper word. Um, when, People are taking, trying to take, to see the world as black and white. I'm a follower. I'm I'm the poor one. I'm the I'm the guy who being treated unwell or something. Because, um, well, you, you could easily choose. Oh, I'm, the world is not fair, and just surrender yourself and just playing victim, play play victim throughout your life. You could easily do that, and probably even society would support that decision. Yeah, you're probably right, and you could have some antidepressant and some other things to just support. Yeah, you are you are that victim. You are that the, instead of looking for that dance. What I want to say, Pavel, is that one of the most important things in consciousness is the ability to understand that there are no absolutes and everything is relative. So venom is snake's poison. Venom can be used to cure people in the certain context. Water is to drink. Water brings life. Venom, poison, brings death. Yet it can heal. Water brings life. But if you drink too much water, it can kill you. So to understand that everything is based on the context. But when you to consider context, to consider things not by the three second 
sound bite in the news or not by the tiny picture or thumbnail somebody showed you takes a certain type of consciousness. Questioning and critically thinking what is the bigger context of this takes a certain consciousness. But intellectual laziness, fear, and everything else that we have going programmed into us makes humans not look at the grayness of all these gray, rich gray areas and the colors. They just see bad and good in absolute because that requires no consciousness. And I, I tell you one thing is that I talked to a drill sergeant once and I said, why do people join the army? He said, three reasons. They are fed, they're clothed, and they are told what to do. There are people who love to be told what to do. They, are, they love to be said, this is bad, this is good. And when they do that, that's it. They don't have to think for themselves. They don't have to use their consciousness. They don't have to see the nuances. And going to the, to the, to the, so there's one side where people are not very conscious and just choosing the side, either it's good or bad. But there's the other side where you are conscious and you start looking, looking for a deeper understanding of certain topics. And yeah. what I'm curious about is when you are in that con conscious state, what, I'm, what I understood is the, the more I'm trying to understand things, the, the more I don't understand them. And that may, that can make you go crazy. No, I actually love. Uh, how that do you see so the balance? Much. How do you see I the love balance? That. See, to me, there, the, I, I love, 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 and I actually wrote a certain last my last post in my group was about this that. Uh, I know. For a fact that I know basically about one trillionth of information in reality, and that's in a good day. One trillionth is too much, and I have even less control over like one gazillion. I have no control over anything. I know this. It's it's. You know, Pavel, it's not really, it doesn't take rocket science. All we need to do is just go, like, okay, our current science has not even discovered what is the nature of life. If there is a dead body and a live body, and one of them is breathing and the other is dead, there is nothing in our science can show other than the fact that there's life happening. There's nothing, there is no science that shows why this body is alive, why this body is dead. You haven't figured out the simplest, most simplest things in this reality. Yet, we have this idea that we have figured out everything. I know for a fact that I know nothing. And I love that I know nothing because that means that there is an infinite amount to know. And then at the same time, I know that I control nothing. And I surrender to that. And the more I can take that in, mm -hmm. and the more I have done my own inner work so that I can hear the song of spirit, that's the essential part. Of being able to hear the song of spirit, being able to hear my own self, the less I need to control, the less I need to know. Because what I do, and I spoke to you about this in our conversation, all I am doing all the time, I am asking to just be an instrument of the divine and have God's will done through me because I do not know and I do not care to know and I do not need to know what all these trillion bits of information is that at any given second is changing, every nanosecond is changing. Rather, I say, I want to get connected to the quantum computer, which is this universe, which is basically every single bit is bringing information. And this universe is 
this quantum computer of the most massive intelligence. I'm asking that to take me over and lead me to do what to do. And my life is super simple because I'm always going by that, those messages and my own, my own internal dialogue aligning me where I need to go. Okay. Let's, I, talk, let's talk for a moment because I have, I, I'm, I'm wondering one thing when you said that you, you don't really need to know, you don't feel that need about knowing what the other informations are. But at some point mm -hmm. as well, we are looking for discovering you're looking for discovering what you don't know, what's the meaning of different aspects, and how, how, because in my case is I'm constantly curious and sometimes I'm freaking out, so my, freaking myself out that I don't understand, understand so much. And I'm trying to get as much knowledge as possible so use my entire possible time to understand as much as possible and you found some sort of a balance that, well a balance and ac accepted truth that you realize that you don't really need to know those things and you are accepting what the world brings you could you talk so, a little so, bit more about it yeah see, see the thing is that pavel uh, what's going on is that you and i are very different type of people because there are people who absolutely need to know a lot. I have never been one of those people. I have a different way of operating. But what you and I can share is a sense of surrendering and accepting that you would get to know and you would know that Let's just, just speak about you and your in just like unquenchable thirst for knowledge. That's awesome. I appreciate that. I enjoy to be with somebody who likes to know so much like. Um, and that's awesome. But at the same point, it's important for you, for a person who has this enormous knowledge thirst, to know that there is a fraction of things you can know because of all the limitations we have and that to be able to be content to know as much as you know and not let, uh, you know, there's, a, there's an expression, we call it fear of missing out. F, uh, we call it those of us who go to Burning Man call it FOMO, fear of missing out. So for you, with this enormous thirst for knowledge, it's great for you to be able to not have FOMO and just say, I am learning what I need to be learning and I'm doing my best and I'm enjoying myself. But it really boils down to a level of trust and surrender to the divine goodness of reality and your own power. And when you can sort of rest into that, then it's not really, um, if you don't know everything about everything, you feel there is a relaxation inside you, that it's not feeling that sort of a feverish need to know everything that there is. So that's it. That relaxation comes from trust and surrender to... Absolutely. Absolutely. Okay, so if we, will go if we would go a little bit deeper into that, so probably if there is no such thing inside of me, it's probably caused by some limiting beliefs or something what's happened in my past. Is that correct? Or... Uh, it's your incredible curiosity is your greatest instrument, is your greatest available tool, which is incredibly great for you. At the same time, all our greatest strengths are our weaknesses. So that level of needing to know, that level of incredible thirst for knowledge, 
at the fundamental level, there are points that that becomes a weakness. And that's, I, I don't, I don't, I, I can't even tell you if you are, because you have this because of trauma. It's not about that. This is about, this is, is curiosity, Pavel. It's, it's a big part of who you are. It defines you. It's, it's very much the spark of God's spark that you have. It has this beautiful curiosity inside you. So what I would see you, what I would wish for you is not to lose even an ounce of that curiosity, but having a certain calmness with it, having a certain serenity with it. I, 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 I had somebody who said, motion and stillness and stillness in motion. And your curiosity is an extremely volatile, powerful, dynamic, and for you to be able to sort of rest on that and relax into it and not, not have the sense of uh, a, the, 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 the biggest issue, Pavel, is need. When we get to this certain sort of a need, and it's this need is not like, like I need water or I need air or something, I need food, but this is sort of an intellectual existential need that becomes problematic. And so being able to mm -hmm. handle that need and become familiar with that need and love that part of yourself. I mean, there's a part of you, there's, a, there's Pavel, the scientist, and the curious, that he's constantly curious and constantly asking questions. And there are parts of you that are not exactly in cahoots with this part. They're not, they're not integrated. And this part gets you in trouble, this part gets you successful, but there are, there's constant friction between this part mm -hmm. and other parts of you. Let's explain it. Uh, what, what is... <laughs> yep, go on. The idea is that how do we soften this friction? Soft and? Soften the friction. So there is a lot of... Uh, there's a lot of uh, edges and rough patches between the connection between Pavel the Curious, Pavel the Scientist, and the rest of Pavel. And there is almost uh, misunderstanding, there is uh, disrespect, there is blame, there's all kinds of things internally happening. And interesting, interesting what you, what's yeah. going on right now when I'm able to bring what you are saying here to the reality is that whichever, whenever I got a free time, um, my mind is constantly having a question, looking for the answer, answer is there, so I'm, I'm constantly have another, another question and i need to take look into the internet or speak to someone need to find that knowledge constantly and that causes headaches mm -hmm. that causes limiting me from actually taking the action on on the business side instead mm -hmm. and not only just looking for the answers but there that that my limit that curiosity can limit from taking the real world action instead of just philosoph philosophically looking for the answers Precisely, my friend. Precisely. What happens is that um, this is what this whole self-sabotage thing is, right? We are talking about self-sabotage in a sort of a um, indirect way. So what happens is that in your kingdom of Pavel, internal kingdom, curious Pavel is sitting at the, t at the head of the table and everybody else has to be obedient, uh, bring the resources, bring their thoughts. All the other parts of Pavel have to just sort of uh, comply with this Pavel the Curious. Because that's the way Pavel, you, the entity, human, community of souls and cells, you, sees yourself as Pavel the Curious. It's, it's a very 
it's a it's a very identity of yours. And that that's cool again, it's fine, but there is a point that there needs to be shared values and shared accommodation and shared resources and shared and you know to understand that as much as Pavel the curious has done so much for you, but he is also has all these drawbacks and weaknesses and that you know that the problem is not with Pavel or any part of Pavel being in charge. The problem is that for that part to be in charge all the time. So I, I give you a very simple example. I, uh, my coach was uh, teaching us uh, and it was a weekend. And I told him, do you want to come to this party with me? And it was Saturday night. And he said, sure, I'll go to the party with you. And he had to teach us the next day also. You know, the next. So I take him to this nice, fun party. And Pavel, his coach, my coach, he goes to the corner of the room and he sleeps for four hours. I'm like... Why the hell did you come to the party if you wanted to sleep? It makes no sense. And he said that one of the deepest things that I've ever learned in my life, Pavel. He said, I went to myself. When you invited me to this party, I went to myself and I looked at what's going on. And there was a part of me that was extremely curious about this party and was the playful part, part of me and wanted to go party. Wanted to go have fun. And then there's this responsible part of me is like, dude, you have to teach tomorrow. You have no time for party. You have to sleep. You need sleep. So these two parts came to me. One part, the party guy is like, I want to go party. I want to go have fun. I haven't had party for a long time. This other part came to me and said, dude, I need to be responsible. I need to teach. So I told him, you, go to the party. You, sleep. Right? So this is one of the most powerful things we learn inside us, Pavel, that we learn how to do horse trading inside ourselves. You clean the room, then I will buy you ice cream. Trading. Right? Or something. Absolutely. You have to become a master so of figuring like out. So it's like I'm going, for example, I'm, there's my favorite co coffee and I'm working for like a few hours, then I can take some time to just enjoy that coffee. Enjoy the coffee. Well. Yes. Yes. And I'm saying to you that like, if there are parts sometimes that you see that, like you told me that there could be something interfering with your business, right? That you're, 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 you're asking all these questions without implementing a solution for your business and you could say okay well i i really need to come up with this business proposal and i know i love asking questions and interviewing people and all that stuff uh but i need to do this business proposal so what do i do i i, I know that the moment i want to do this business proposal i'm just getting oh i want to talk to somebody i want to get information what if you let me, Pavel the Curious, you let me do the business proposal for the next two hours or next four hours. And then I let you go on internet to search for six hours. So you constantly do horse trading with yourself. That's a powerful. <laughs> because, I, because I noticed that there is um, me curious, me taking action. So me, me, my thirst for learning knowledge, for taking the action, and actually, um, I noticed that there is me, me wanting to relax, wanting to go for running, to meditate, right. and and right. like the three parts. So it's more advanced yeah. trading. <laughs> yeah, and then, so it's like yeah, the the more the better you become at identifying these parts. Like okay, I have a curious part that that wants to do this. I have a part that wants to relax or meditate. I have this, and then, and when I talk about, and what is self-sabotage? 
Self-sabotage is when one of these parts doesn't get their way. So when they, they don't get their way, they, they go on a war path with a part that is in charge, right? And then the, the self-sabotage and the worst situation becomes like somebody, you know, somebody is like a super kind person. Like you see this person, they're kind, they're nice, they say the nicest things, they're the most polite person. And they, other, you know, other people mistreat them, they never respond, they just constantly say the best things that you can say. And, you know, they just keep holding all these resentments at all the people, but they are nice. They're identified as nice Johnny, and this nice Johnny can never say something bad. You know, they are kind and giving and forgiving and nice. Then this nice Johnny is having his days and is building resentment and building resentment and building resentment and gathering resentment. And then one time, I don't know, he's home and his wife tells him, I think you're taller today. And then suddenly Johnny blows up and maybe slaps her. And then after a second, it's like, what the hell happened? Why did I? Like that self-sabotage, that a part of you that has been hidden, has been disgruntled, has been put away, suddenly comes out in a flash, does a whole bunch of destruction and goes back. And you, the, the, the character, that is running this whole person, personal thing, you can't even tell where that aggression came from. So it all coming from not being aligned, not, not giving a voice to parts of yourself. Absolutely. That, it, that at any given moment, there are dozens of voices in any normal human being who hasn't done a lot of inner work on themselves. That, okay. they, you know, these, yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, so uh, what, could you bring some more practical examples to give the understanding to our audience and to myself as well? Well, I mean, I, I, I gave you this example, I think last time when we spoke that I had a client and that he had a, he had a date with this girl and during his whole date, um, uh, there was a part of him, uh, th there was a voice in him that he kept saying that, you suck, this girl sucks, this is horrible, I hate you, she hates you, why are you wasting your time? They had a very bad experience of this date with this really pretty girl. So he came to me, we had a session, and he's like, I mean, what's going on? Why, why is this happening to me? And I'm like, what do you think about this voice? He's like, I hate him. I'm like, okay, I understand. What do you want to happen to it? I want it to go away. I want it to shut up. I, I, I never want to hear from it. I'm like, okay, what if I told you this voice cares about you? I was like, no way. There's no way this, you know, this wanted to destroy me. I'm okay, cool. Tell me when you were a child, when you were six, seven, eight years old, did you have a maybe not pleasant experience with a girl? And he said, well, I went and asked this when I was six, seven, eight, I asked this girl to go out with me. And she said, no. And then she said, no. I went in the bathroom and threw up for a couple of hours. And I was sick for a couple of weeks. And I'm like, this part of you has been doing, trying to protect you from that happening to you ever again. It's been doing that all your life because it loves you so much. It doesn't want that to happen to you again. And so next time you go on a date and this, you know, the girl is kind of, uh, you go on a date and this voice comes out and tries to, you know, sabotage you, what do you consider sabotage? You just simply say, thank you so much for your service. I love everything you have done for me. You have kept me alive. 
and you have kept me away from all these bad relationships. Thank you so much. But from now on, please let me handle this. And this is the formula of dealing with every saboteur part you have. You discover what's going on, you discover where they came from, you make them from a saboteur who wants to destroy you and destroy other parts of you, into allies and guardians who sit at your boardroom and give you courteous information. That's, that's interesting. Yesterday, uh, in my, yesterday, I got some very high tension inside of myself and I knew that something is n not right with me when I'm interacting with people because I'm getting anger and anger and more angry and more and more. So I get like away for 10 minutes and I just sit down in a quiet room and I ask myself, what are you, wh what are you trying to, to say to me? I understand that there is something bothering you. Could you tell me more? And I just close my eyes and, and just focus on my breathing. And the answers are popping up. What's causing you though being stressed, being anger. And that allow, that allow me itself to get that calmness. And then I said, then I said something like, like you mentioned here, thank you for those information. It's very valuable for me. So we can tackle the situation in a different way right now. I understand that you care about that. Absolutely. Marvelously well done, Powell. That's amazing. That's exactly what you do. When, uh, when the question was asked, how do you handle self-sabotage? You handle it by knowing that there is no self. Self is an artifact. It doesn't exist, especially in the normal human beings who haven't done a lot of inner work. Self is just this discordant voices, hundreds of them, dozens of them, whatever, that they're all wanting different things. So what you consider sabotage, it's not really sabotage. It's one of those parts getting what they want at the expense of everybody else. But of course, when you do the inner work, like you did beautifully right there, you start getting integrated. You start talking to this part, say, what is bothering you? And if you remember in our this conversation, for me, the most powerful tools are mirror work and speaking to yourself kindly. And you know, I always did this, that I have a hand mirror. I look at myself in the mirror and I speak with myself and I say this like, I love you and what is going on with you. I always say you to the guy in the mirror and he says I back to me. So we can have a conversation the way you had a conversation, very advanced work that you did. And then also really learning how to speak because the way we usually speak speak to ourselves is unkind, yelling, directing, mm -hmm. whereas gently, I think uh, Hamid, tenderly. Hamid, um, subconsciously I used that exercise, I, that was about a week or, uh, or two after our conversation and I had a uh, massive argument with my, with, uh, with my girlfriend. We went out to, to some restaurant and wanted to talk about it and I was constant and I was angry, like, I couldn't really resist of my anger. And then I look in on the mirror yeah. and, and I notice that there is that small Pavel who is just feeling lonely, feeling mm -hmm. some certain emotions. And I started to, do, and, and I said to my partner, could you give me like five minutes? And she didn't understand what I'm doing, but I actually just <laughs> look inside yeah. the mirror and I was having yeah. that inner conversation with me. Like, yeah. I didn't see myself adult Pavel. I see yeah. my inner child yeah. just trying to say something to me. Yeah. And then like within five minutes, we get to, we get to common agreement. And then yeah. we just have a, had a conversation because I realized, yeah. okay, what's inside of me? And the answer is not out there in my partner, but the answer was inside yeah. of me after the yeah. conversation.
with a kindness yeah. in the voice yes of that time yes yeah and and that's exactly you you've done amazing you know i i told you a couple of things and you've done so well with it and yeah it, it's like it's all about me and it's all about you it's like when people are and you know you have reached the level of consciousness that you know that a lot of times when you're fighting with your girlfriend or fighting with your business partner or something or when people are doing it, it's not you're not doing it with them. Your stuff is doing it with their stuff. Your baggage is doing it with their baggage. And because when you bring it down to the level of human to human, you actually feel things and hear things. Like with my friend, you know, with my love of my life here, we fight constantly like constantly, but then we fight every time we get closer because we are not trying to hold on to our stuff. <laughs> we are not holding on to our baggage. I'm not trying to make her look bad. I'm not trying to make myself look good. It's not about that. It's about understanding ways that we can do, live better together, work better together. And it's not because... I want to make, it's just not some sort of an ego thing. It's not about winning. It's about co-creation and playing together. But when we are triggered, as you were triggered, we can't do that. Not until we reach a certain tools and instruments inside ourselves that we can actually reach ourselves and not let our stuff do the talking. And that's the brilliant thing you did. You, your stuff was doing the talking. Your baggage was doing the, doing the talking. You did the mirror work. You got it true to yourself. And when you got true to yourself, then you could actually talk vulnerably and tenderly to your girlfriend. And she could feel you. You could feel her. And things changed. So, but, so here, here that comes that awareness when what's going on inside of you, instead of trying to fight and blame others, we are aware, okay, that the, the, there is some, if I'm feeling anger, there is some problem inside of me I need to tackle. If that impacted me, there is some anger, there is some probably thing, body trying to tell me, the inner self. Yeah. In some ways, it's, it's, it's complex because Pavel... Uh, for me, I am all about energy, all about, I'm very, very protective of my energy. I love talking to you because I like you. I told you, I, I care for you. You're a good man. I can see your kindness. I can see your curiosity. But if somebody else wanted to have a conversation with me, after two minutes, I would be probably drained because I can see my state of energy, that I can see, I can be myself with you, I can play with you, I can work with you, I can dig deeper with you. I don't have to play games, I don't have to master appearances, I don't have to, you know, perceive, work with perception. I don't have to do any of that crap. So I can be with myself, be myself with you. But if I'm with somebody at once all that crap from me, then if I'm having a situation with them, it's not about me, it's about the stuff that they are putting me through. Do you understand? So there are differences. It's, it's like, this is why to me, our relationships, we need to care about people that matter to us and work with them. But if somebody doesn't matter to us, if somebody, you know, hates me or somebody is some guy in the street and says something to me, I can't have them affect me. I can't have their opinion destroy my life. Right? So it's like, it's, it's, so when you, so most of it is internal, but sometimes it's external. Like so when you're talking about the, the energy here, so you brought out an um, example of Sometimes there are conversations you talk with people for, for a minute or two and you just don't feel like and how so so that's something you feel inside of you and you act on the feeling you got like okay I'm I'm no, I don't have time right now and you just go away or you just try. 
or I, 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 okay, so here's the thing, Pavel. It's, I have the extreme privilege of really not living in a matrix. I don't live the reality of other people live. Because I don't live that reality, being in that reality, even for five minutes, is so toxic to me that it's extremely hard for me to be in a toxic situation that other people call life, right? I, 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 I can't do it. I like, you know, I have an amazing life with my lover and I have a very simple life and I don't really have all that crap. Now, if somebody brings that crap to me, I'm really just not interested. Like <laughs> one of the things that I do, Pavel, is that, you know, sometimes people disagree with me, right? They want to go and they basically go on a war path with me. They start creating these documents and they, they create sort of, they want to argue with me and disagree with me. And they go on for like an hour and they go on. And then I say, yeah, you're right. And they like completely just suddenly they have nothing, right? Because if you give something to somebody who wants it, and then you say, hey, I, I, you win. You, you are the better man. You're like, like, I have zero interest. I have zero interest to follow this sort of a path of conflict or path of this energy. And you get to a point that you understand that everybody who's unaware is looking for some kind of energy. They either want your anger, their sadness, <laughs> jealousy, something. They want something. And if you become like a stone that doesn't really leak energy, after a while, they go find another tree to buy. Right? It's like it's this tree, this Hamid guy is not giving me what they want. I, I go insult him, he doesn't say anything. I go say Good things to him, he doesn't say anything. I say bad things to him, doesn't say anything. After a while, they kind of just, they just really lose interest and move on. But the problem is um, causing the... Oh, here, here is the question I wanted to ask. Um, when becoming that, that stone and not being affected by what other people are saying by the energy from them it requires a lot of inner work would you mind just bring, i know it i know it's complex but what would be the starting point to get to that level of awareness that you are just don't buying that matrix shit anymore <laughs> uh all right, let me, you need to sort of break down that question because you basically will ask something which requires. Sure. Um, so what I'm trying to get here is that a lot of people, a lot of people from community need to work their nine to five as well. And, and if you have not, if you don't have that privilege yet to a business owner and surround yourself only with people you want to work with and you need to go to your nine to five job, there are people who will affect you if you want this or not. Or right now, I'm not even sure that it's true or not, because I probably the belief I hold to myself that they, they will affect me because I'm spending eight hours a day with them. I probably I'm not. I can choose not them. I can choose them not to affect me. But what would be the starting point to see that? Okay, their energy doesn't have to affect me in a negative way. So I don't need to follow what they're saying. Um. Okay. Right, so. We are different people. People are different people. So I am a rebel, right? All my life, I've, like, I've lived on in a way that people's opinion hasn't mattered. I've not done that because I kind of invented that in myself. It was the way I kind of had to do it to survive in this reality, right? I, my journey, as I talked to you before, has been more about not necessarily caring about people, but actually being more affected to by people, 
So it's, it's kind of like for me to tell you that's my modus operandi, if you will, right? So my MO is not being affected by all these people because that's, that's the way I kind of grew up, right? But let's, let's try to sort of find an example. Let's say um, if there is an example person, which is not Hamid, because Hamid is a different way of dealing. Let's say Bob has this issue of being um, affected by the negative thoughts, uh, the ne negative things that other people tell Bob, okay? The reason for Bob being so incredibly affected by what other people say is because Bob doesn't love and appreciate himself. Not as much as Bob could love and appreciate himself. See, the thing is, um, one of the funny things that I like to say, Pavel, is that narcissism is the opposite of self-love, which is very strange, right? Narcissism is the opposite of self. Because narcissists require other people say, oh, you're amazing, you're magnificent. Oh my God, what a speech, what a thing. It's like they constantly want to be put on a pedestal by other people. That's what narcissists need. They need it. External validation for them. Absolutely, kind of. brother. You got it. External validation everywhere. Why? Because they are not internally validated. So I work with myself to be internally validating myself and internally motivating so I do not need others to tell me, Hamid, you're great, you're amazing, you're whatever. I'm like, okay, great, whatever. It doesn't really matter because I am getting fed by myself. If you can't feed yourself, you are desperate to be fed by other people. Now, those people can choose to feed you good stuff or bad stuff, but you are super affected by what, by what they are feeding. But if you're feeding yourself, if somebody says, hey, I brought you a bunch of garbage to eat, well, you have created your average person is so hungry for attention, for, for affection, for connection. So even somebody brings a bunch of garbage, it's like, okay, well, there's something, something to eat. But if you have, or it's like you're, everybody's so thirsty, right? This is, I wrote a post about this, but it's like about this idea, Pavel, that connection is the biggest thing in humanity. That's one of our basic needs. Yet, there is no connection in this reality. There is no internal connection and there is no external connection. So people are constantly looking for ways to simulate and fax in my connection. And this is actually my piece is about the fact that violence is actually a form of connection. Because when you're violent to somebody, you have to pay attention to them. You have to connect with them. Now, so everything is about you becoming self-sufficient internally. When you're self-sufficient internally, then um, it's like you're connected to yourself, you're connected to your lover, you're connected to your family. Then somebody comes and wants to pick a fight with you. You're like, no, thank you. I'm, I'm not really interested, right? Just whatever. It's, it's kind of like the way you're sitting at home and you have a spring in your garden and somebody knocks on your door and say, oh, I have, a, I have a glass of sewage water. And if you're dying of thirst, like most people, you're like, oh, okay, okay, I'll drink it. 
but they come and knock on your door and you're like, I have a wellspring. Thank you, but not. And so you look at this and you take your comments and you look at the energy that other people bring you. And if you're so dying to hear from these people and get what they say and get their approval or get be afraid of their not approving you, then everything they do is affecting you so big time. But if you are internally motivated, and happy with yourself and loving yourself, it doesn't matter what they do. So, um, based on what you said, I think that for, that fear of missing out is connected to it because you are missing out on something from outside instead of being just validated and motivated internally. Is that? Well, I mean, in, in some ways you could say that because fear of missing out is that it's still fear and still a problem. Because um, the, the point I'm trying to, to uh, bring here is that here is what's popular right now online. Everybody got a course. Everybody, like, uh, everybody need to have an online course to give people away and sell that. And uh, you are having so uh, some bunch of people coming to you and trying to sell you something and oh i'm gonna be buying that i will buy that i'll buy that i'll buy that but then from where it's coming from it's if they're affected by all of that stuff and they are not usually people are creating courses in order to uh, for them to show and help people, but actually those who buy those courses, I notice that they are collect, it becoming a collect collection. So they don't really go through, but buying those courses for the sake of buying that and finding the answer outside instead of finding the answer within. And actually the intention of getting that knowledge. It's, you, you're, you're talking about a very, sad state of the affair in reality, this reality right now, which is what you call the collector state, um, which is a very materialistic state that people just go around and collect things. And when they say collect things, they, they have two experiences, collector and tourists. <laughs> they collect things and they're like tourists, right? And... Um, and I tell you something which is really bothers me and saddens me, but so much of spiritual stuff that I see right now has become consumerism. It's a spiritual consumerism. From yoga to meditation, there are so many things people are doing. They're consuming something. They're not actually doing the work. Um, you know, I, I knew somebody who would go to India and, you know, all the time, and she was at Eckhart Tolle's this and this, at the Ashanti's that, and she was so super connected to all these people. And, you know, I knew this person, and uh, one time uh, they, uh, they came home from a, like a three-month, whatever, retreat, meditation retreat. Mm -hmm. And they were extremely nasty with me. They were, like, yelling at me, almost hitting me, and I'm like, uh, I just, I mean, this is a simple question for you, you know, I mean, you do this amazing retreat and all this meditation and all this spiritual stuff. Don't you guys maybe work on your emotions? And then they screamed at me, no, we don't work on that. But, okay. So, Pavel, <laughs> what's happening is that consumerism is alive and well and collecting as alive and well. Now, for me, what's really cool is that when you know yourself, when you know inside your system, what is that you need, you know what you like and you know what you love and you know what you enjoy and you don't know what you don't enjoy. The way I am, Pavel, I can go inside the mall and buy nothing. And the other day, a few years ago, when I walked in this, uh, inside this mall, I saw this energy that people 
who didn't want to buy something would buy it anyway. Like there was this feverish energy going between the seller and the buyer that they're going there, we're going through this sort of a weird interaction, which wasn't really real. It was all hormones or something. And what's happening with these people and, you know, a lot of this stuff, spiritual teaching, courses, mm -hmm. what's happening mm -hmm. is that people are getting that fever and they are going, something is attractive to them and they're collecting them and it's really not hitting them. It's not really connected to them. They're not really following it. They're not following through with it. Whereas somebody like me would never do that because I, based on based what I do or what I get or what I connect to or what I spend my time with, is what makes me feel good. I don't have time for being manipulated by somebody else's machinations because they want to sell me a course. Here, like, here, here, is the, here is the big one. You probably noticed that as well. When I, I'm laughing when there's people are t talking to asking me, uh, Pavel, what's the best app to meditate? <laughs> best app to meditate yeah like yeah, just no, totally. sit, sit down in the calm play calm yeah. place focus on your breath yeah you're done yes best app to meditate yeah <laughs> it's like that that's that's awesome that 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 right there is that's where we are in this reality it's it's become so insanely just deceptive the deception is everywhere best app to meditate is I love that. I'm just gonna like make that a post. Best app to meditate because that's like, you know, it's, it, it, that's it, this is people love to go through the motions and look, and that's the tourism. I told you there's a tourist and there's a collector. They're like, ha, ah, look, of them meditator three thousand app on my phone. You have three thousand. I'm meditator mega. Nirvana thing, and it's like, and then like you know, they take a picture of themselves, a selfie of themselves with their app, kind of like the way somebody would go to Paris and sharing, sharing, I meditated twenty yes. minutes today. Yes, <laughs> and comments. Yes. yes, yes, and then and go to the next to the Eiffel Tower and stand and it's like, oh, look at me, and then the same thing with the app. So it's the, the same superficial, artificial, sad sense of trying to get be fed by these faceless whatever and it's like oh so that you know so the, the interaction is basically a tourist or a you know collector tourism collector i think i think we are running out of time uh, right yeah. now, so I don't want to really start another topic because we could talk for, <laughs> for, for, for another hour or so. Yeah. Um, and uh, for, well, if you are open to it, I would love to uh, to catch up uh, soon as well to go a little bit more on depth. Uh, still, sure. well, open to it. I'm happy to hear that. Yeah. Right. Sure. Um, Hamid, uh, last sentence to Patty, for example, about the self sabotage. I know we answered that, but just to summary that and give like a last thought to, to consider. Today. Look, I, 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 I say this, you know, as a life coach, this is what I do, that you come, people come with an internal cacophony, that there are all these angry, <laughs> barely men yelling at the top of their lungs. And there's this sweet little girl spirit singing very quietly. My work and the work that I help people do and I, the work I like people to do for themselves is go from that state of cacophony to the state of symphony where every single one of these barely angry yelling men is sitting down courteously and respectfully and gently and they're all sitting down at your table, at your boardroom, they are giving you the best information. At any given point, you can hear the beautiful song of spirit playing. 
And the way you do this is by what I call discovering, uh, acknowledging, understanding, appreciating, embracing, celebrating, honoring all these men and loving them to integrate into you. Awesome. Is she able to reach out to you if she would have some questions or other people from our group? Yeah, yeah. The, you know, they can post something on the group or something or message me or whatever. Sure. Awesome. Awesome. So just to Within, within the next day, we'll be sharing some, uh, some bits and bobs from the conversations and um, then people can um, refer and ask questions. So, um, so based on that, if you see something, um, well, yeah. Hamid is here to actually answer all your questions as well. And so you're not running away. If the energy is, if the energy is matching, you can have a conversation with us <laughs> very yeah, much. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And if you have any, if you would like to join our uh, our next Saturday live or any other Saturday live which is available, just give me a shout or comment under the video below, and we can take you on board. Or do like Hamid did and just post, uh, drop a post how to do that. So I'll be more than happy to get you uh, to sign you in. All right. So thank you for being Hamid and sharing so much of an amazing knowledge with me. I, I, my brain is exploding right now and <laughs> I can see what, man, actually you gave me so personalized knowledge at this point that I can impact straight, that I can implement that straight away. Um, we've seen the patterns, the, the mirror one, the speaking kindly, because the mirror one in that restaurant was simply because um, there was a mirror on my left side yeah. <laughs> and I just look uh, unconsciously into that. So some yeah. energy brought me to that actual particular place, something out of no, no, we just walked there. And I, yeah. I wouldn't, I can't even explain that, but things happen and the world showing you and giving you signs. So instead of looking, outside spend some time with you do some internal yeah, work uh, and, and and so what you said Pavel, about the mirror thing the more you work with yourself the more you listen to Pavel, the more you hear the song of the spirit that mirror thing becomes basically almost a daily occurrence uh we are right now in the Philippines and we are moving to Mexico City, Mexico next week. It's an extremely complicated trip that I had no idea what to do. I had no idea how many logistics we're gonna play with. And then the moment it was time for us to actually pull the trigger, the number of synchronicities and the number of wings from the spirit that I got Pavel it just blew me the hell away. So for me, miracles happen basically on an hourly basis because you get to a point when you start really connecting with yourself and loving yourself and getting your house in order, your internal house in order, then you see that miracle is not some kind of an external thing that happens once in a million years, that miracles and having magic, it's actually the normal way of life. And synchronicities happen every, you know, quickly. And it's when that stuff doesn't happen, you become super, wow. What? So for me, the fact that, you know, you end up being next to a mirror when you could do a mirror work or kind of, to me, that's going to happen more and more and more for you, the more you connect. Once they connect, you connect with yourself. That's something I'm working. I'm working with on my inner child and on on that mirror and and through what's 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 Pavel wants, not what's wants other coach, other coaches, other mentors. 
but actually yeah. I can consciously choose. Okay, if I if there is a need right now inside of me to know some particular thing, I can choose consciously instead of being bombarded by fancy website, fancy videos, fancy stuff from outside. Because I tend to look for the answers outside, and I and I notice oh. The quickest way out is the way in to finding inside in the answers. The, the, in, in yeah, the I mean, I, I've heard this from some pretty wise people recently, and this is not recent, I've heard this a lot, but it's this, you're not learning anything, Pavel, you're just remembering. Remembering, could you, could you explain? You know everything. You will, you've created this whole reality. We are all God. So it's not so much about learning something new, just remembering. And it's like, energetically speaking, it's not so much about uh, uh, like you create something. It's all most of it, most of this world. You know, I, I told you I called myself a transformational journey guide. And the transformational journeys that I guide people to are basically always journeys within when you go discover things that are already in you. So it's not a matter of, oh, let's go build something or invent something or create something or discover something from outside. You have the whole universe inside you. It's just a matter of discovering. It. And then, of course, the remembering thing, you know, remember, become a member again, connected. And also you have all this information, so you're remembering. <coughs> and so the better you become at remembering it, um, and what's interesting for you, Pavel, is that this is what you did, and this is, this is how you can really have fun with your curiosity. What if you turn that curiosity internally, and you started becoming curious about information with asking extremely complicated things from you rather than going to Google, rather than going to some big guy and his website, ask yourself and learn how to listen to Pavel's infinite information and knowledge because you have all that answers. And not only that, you also can start seeing we can work with signs and synchronicities. I told you we are moving from Philippines to <coughs> Mexico, and we had we had to figure out all these ticket prices and all these things and where to go and when to go, and we had all these different dates. And Pavel, mm -hmm. there were only a few tickets that were $444. 444 happens to be a you know master number that I have a lot of respect for and I love for and I work with. So spirit was winking at me, here, here, get this, right? So it's like all the time the answers not only are inside you, but you also get signs outside you, right? Like there is maybe a radio program, there's a song that pops up, there's a TV show, your girlfriend something, something, but you buy something, there's answers coming to you everywhere and the more you're in tune and you stop with the moment the moment we stop seeing okay the answer is all inside google or inside some book or inside somebody's head that the answer is everywhere the more you can actually tap into that quantum computer that i told you that is everywhere Really, really, that's another topic I would like to talk about. Um, time is rushing, so yeah. we'll talk about it in the in the next one. I very much appreciate sure. taking your time and yeah, yeah, my mind. absolutely, man. Yeah, all it the best. Was great. Thank you very much for doing this. Thank you, and wishing you all the best with that tri trip to Mexico. And we will see you. Thank you. you uh, yeah. We'll see yourself probably we'll, in Mexico from from. Yes, yeah, we will. We will talk when I'm in Mexico. Yes, take care, brother. Brilliant. Take care, and for you bye, too. Bye bye. bye. Take care.